Welcome to Second Take, a show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. There have been a number of developments in the South African automotive industry this week. Irma Fenter joins me to discuss these developments. Hi, Irma. Hi, Chanel. Ford South Africa has provided some insight into its $1 billion investment at its Pretoria plant for the production of the next generation Ranger Bucky. How are those plans progressing? Well, it seems to be going well, and they've just emerged from a seven-week shutdown where they're trying to prepare for the new Ranger that will, of course, be launched in 2022. That's next year. And uh, there's going to be a dramatic increase in production capacity at the plant. So uh, 10 years ago, when they started production of the current Ranger, it was 100,000 units a year. They're going to go to 200,000 units a year now. So that's quite an increase in capacity. So the plant will, um, of course, then see quite a few developments around this. It will get a new stamping plant, a new paint shop, a new body shop, um, a new frame line. That is, of course, the chassis line that Ford is now taking in-house. So we're seeing quite a dramatic increase in the footprint of the plant and, and the uh, people working there as well. They've added 1,200 new jobs at the plant uh, through a third shift. So that plant will operate now five days a week, uh, three shifts, so that's 24 hours a day. So things seem to be progressing well. They say they're on time to produce the new Ranger and it will, of course, go to more than 100 export markets when all of that wraps up. Um, a new addition for the plant will also be that the Volkswagen Amarok will be produced there, and that's part of a global production deal between the German manufacturer and the American manufacturer. But uh, whole thumbs, but everything seems to be going fine. Turning to BMW South Africa, what is the impact of the global semiconductor chip shortage on its production? Well, that semiconductor or computer chip uh, shortage has actually started before COVID. Um, and that's largely due to the increased uh, kind of computing power we see within the average car these days. I mean, it's got safety systems and, and cameras and sensors. So all of that requires some kind of um, computing power. So there was an increasing demand from car manufacturers before COVID. And then, of course, COVID struck. And then we had the problem of shutdowns. So in Asia now, we see third wave shutdowns in countries such as Malaysia and Vietnam, and that's as affecting semiconductor production. So that then goes, uh, that spills across to, to vehicle production lines and supply chains in Europe and in South Africa and everywhere else. The problem is with South Africa being so far away from, from BMW and from Europe, that hub of production in Europe, is that the supply chains are very, very long. So it's impossible for BMW to quickly maneuver and change as they can do in Europe and alter production of some computer part or some chip or, or some component is not available. They can just change and shift production around. That's not possible if you're in South Africa because we need very long lead times and the supply chains are very long. So what they're doing at the moment is that they're prioritizing production in South Africa at the Roslyn plant uh, here in Pretoria to try and make sure that the X3 that we produce, of course, for the local and the export markets can get to customers without any delays. Lastly, what is needed for South Africa to successfully participate in the global battery supply chain for battery electric and hybrid vehicles? The head of production at Mercedes-Benz spoke to engineering news this week, and interestingly enough, he indicated that we would have to build our electromobility um, ecosystem in South Africa. That means that we would actually have to start buying more electric vehicles, and then we would have to then beef up our infrastructure, our charging infrastructure. So we'd have to be a local market for electric vehicles. And I think people think that's a very far distant dream, but it's not in, in the case. I think we're going to see a dramatic increase in electromobility and electric vehicles coming to the world and to South Africa in the next two to three years. I mean, uh, Mercedes-Benz is coming to the market uh, next year. BMW is coming to the market with more vehicles next year. Audi is coming to the market. So we have this really, really steep increase that we're going to see of electric cars. So then, of course, Mercedes-Benz, they produce the C-Class down here in South Africa and also a plug-in hybrid model. We would like for South Africa, I think, to become really kind of a, a user of electric vehicles because the head of production state, uh, stated an interesting conundrum for South Africa, and that is, is it worth it to take that very heavy battery and ship it all the way to South Africa, produce a vehicle, and then basically ship that battery on the vehicle back to the market where the battery came from? And that is an interesting question. That's a very heavy... Uh, big 
component and shouldn't it rather be produced in South Africa? But of course, then we would need local demand for that vehicle as well. So uh, that's an interesting question. And he said that he did pose that uh, question to the Department of Trade and Industry. So, and we of course have that uh, development paper that we, we can try and see how we can build electric vehicles in South Africa. And we'll have to wait and see in governments and see how that pans out. Of course, South Africa doesn't have incentives for the uh, purchase of electric vehicles. It doesn't offer consumers that kind of incentive to buy electric vehicles as we see overseas. I don't necessarily think government has the budget for that. So that of course poses another interesting question for us to address. Thank you. That's the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.